I never study for more than one hour for each class. I never miss any days at the gym, even if that means that I have a very important test the next day. And I most definitely never miss my Netflix episodes. And how do I do all this? Well, it comes down to two words, active recall. Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Mikey and I'm a pre-med student here in Canada. Now, most of us have our own study techniques and it might work for us and it might not. But let's talk about what study techniques are actually proven to be beneficial for people based on the literature out there. Now, I'm not lying to you when I tell you I don't miss any of my Netflix episodes. And that's because I get most of my studying done in literally the first quarter of the day. And the way I'm able to do that is using active recall. Now, for those of you that don't know what active recall is, it's essentially when you get asked the question and you have to try to figure out the answer in your head. So for example, if someone were to ask me, where do I live? I would have to think about it and then I would say Canada. Me thinking about it, that helps form new synaptic neuron connections that helps me keep the information for a longer period of time. And that ties in very well with space repetition, which is actually what I talked about in my previous video. If you guys have not watched that video, I would recommend that you guys do watch that before checking out this video because it will help you understand this video a bit more. Now, if you guys just want a quick rundown, space repetition is essentially how you space your studying over multiple intervals over a long period of time. And this essentially helps keep the information for a long period of time. And it has been proven to be more effective for students to actually help them perform better on their exams. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about three different concepts. The first is summarizing. So summarizing is widely used between students. I personally used it so much, especially actually in one of my biology courses in first year, I used it a lot and I thought I was gonna kill the exam. Well, I went to the exam and I <laughs> did not kill it at all. But basically summarizing, that's the first thing we're gonna talk about. Then we're gonna talk about elaborative integration, which is another thing that I was like, okay, summarizing sucks, let's do elaborative integration. And that's essentially when you have to explain a concept to yourself. So you're like, okay, well, I live in Canada because Canada is, you know, north of United States and it is west of Europe. So that's why I live in Canada. So you explain the whole concept of an answer to yourself. And finally, we're gonna talk about active recall, which is actually one of the most effective study techniques that was cited in Donlosky's article that I also talked about in my previous video. And what he did was essentially he took a bunch of students and asked them to write down every single study technique that they have ever used. And he took the top 10 most frequent and most used techniques, and he essentially organized them as either low utility, which means it is not effective at all and it sucks, moderate utility, which means it is a bit more effective than low utility, and high utility, which is the most effective study techniques. Think about this for a second, okay? 1% of your class usually scores really, really well. Now, research shows that 1.1% of people that have rated their study techniques and which one they think is the most effective have been using active recall as their most effective study technique. Just think about that for a second and see where that might lead you because in this video, I'm gonna talk about active recall itself and how it's actually very, very effective. Now, before we talk about that, I'd ask that you guys to like the video down below and subscribe because it does help me out so much and helps get this video out to so many more people. But anyways, let's get started. Now, the first thing I'm gonna discuss is summarizing. Now, a lot of us feel super productive when we're summarizing. We're like, okay, we're gonna summarize everything. And all we have to study is a short list of stuff and we'll be good to go for the exam. And in reality, that's actually not the case because Donlosky rated summarizing as low utility, showing that people that summarize stuff are no different than people that don't summarize anything at all. So if you think about it, summarizing is essentially a waste of time. Now, the next thing we're gonna discuss is elaborative integration. So like I said earlier, elaborative integration is essentially when you explain something to yourself. So for example, if I were like, oh my gosh, I'm not peeing that much. Well, maybe I had too much sodium. So if I had too much sodium, then that would help retain the water in my body for a longer period of time. And that would lead me to not pee a lot. So that's essentially when I explain a concept to myself and I confirm that what I'm saying is correct. Another way you could think about this is when a kid comes up to you and they ask you why, you know how a bunch of kids, whenever they wanna learn something too, they're like, why, 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 why? why? So Donlosky actually said, we rate elaborative integration as having moderate utility. Elaborative integration effects have been shown across a relatively broad range of factual topics, although some concerns remain about the applicability of elaborative integration to material that is lengthier or more complex than fact lists. So basically what he's saying, elaborative integration might be beneficial, but it doesn't work for things that are more complex than just memorizing rote facts or rote memorization. He's trying to say it's useful, but it doesn't work for everything. So that shows that elaborative integration is good, but it is not the best effective method to use. And this brings us to our final concept, which is active recall. 
Now, active recall is essentially when you test yourself on information and that helps you keep the information for a longer period of time in long-term memory. Now, a lot of people don't like active recall or implicitly don't like it because it's similar to practice testing because it is essentially a high stakes situation. They think it's a high stakes situation where if you don't do well, you're not gonna get the grades. You're, you know, you're gonna feel like you're a failure. You don't, you don't want that feeling before your exam or they might delay their practice testing right before the exam and they don't have enough time to do as many tests before the exam actually starts. Now this is the wrong mindset and Domlowski actually talks about in his article because the way you actually learn is by filling the gaps between your practice testing between your active recall increments. Now the first research article about active recall was actually over a hundred years ago in 1909. Now let's talk about a more research article that actually took place in 1983 which is actually not that recent, but it's more recent than 1909. And essentially what they did is they took two different groups of students and they gave them a bunch of paired words. So what I mean by paired words, they essentially gave them like, for example, I could say camera and phone, orange and grapefruit. These are two pairs that technically don't go together, but they made them go together and they wanted the students to memorize the pairs of words. And the first group of students did not get tested at all with cued recall or active recall. And the second groups of students did. Then they tested both of these groups of students 10 minutes after their final test and one week after their final test. 10 minutes after their final test, group two, which was given cued recall questions, actually performed a 53% while the group that did not get any active recall questions scored a 36%, which is considerably and actually significantly lower, as explained in this article, than the active recall group. Then one week after, the queued recall group scored a 35%, while the group that did not get any questions actually scored a 4%. Literally, they dropped so much versus the queued recall group. And this makes a lot of sense because the more you're able to form those connections between neurons in your head by answering all those questions, the longer you'll be able to memorize certain information and the longer you'll be able to keep that information in long-term memory. So just remember that pushing those practice tests for a longer period of time will actually be more detrimental to your grades than moving those practice tests much earlier and understanding where your gaps lie in your learning. Now, if you don't think practice testing is as effective as I say it is, I wanna bring your attention to an experiment that was done in 2012. And it was very interesting to see the results of this experiment. Now there were three different groups. One that did only practice tests, one that only studied material, so they restudied material over and over, and one that didn't do either. And what they did is they essentially tested them on an exam that had repeated questions from the practice test, as well as repeated questions that were given inside the study material. And they found that the students that performed practice tests obviously performed the best, and that makes a lot of sense. But they gave them another test on new questions that were not similar or they weren't exactly the same as the questions in the study material or in the practice test where the students had to apply their current knowledge onto new questions. And what they found was very promising and that the students that took practice tests ended up performing the best on this exam. And that makes a lot of sense because it all comes back to the whole circle of active recall and spaced repetition. Now, clearly you guys are convinced that active recall helps with fact-based questions, but I wanna show how it actually helps with application based questions where you have to think about the concept. Now a study in 2010 essentially split up two groups of students. One did practice tests and one restudied the materials and they essentially tested them on facts. First of all, they found a significant difference between the students that took practice tests and they found that they did much better. Then they tested them again on the concept. So they didn't test them on facts, rather they tested them on short answer questions, questions where they had to use their knowledge and apply it on a piece of paper. And they found that the students that took the practice test ended up performing the exact same on the concept questions as well as the facts questions. And the students that restudied the material still performed the worst on the concept material. And that goes to show that not only does active recall help with facts, based questions, but it also helps with concept based questions, which we know come up a lot in university classes. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I'm convinced active recall is the GOAT. Now what do I do? Well, let me tell you there are different methods that you could use. One method is Anki, and that's what I've been using, where you have a mix of space repetition and active recall. This is essentially where you create your own flashcards or download flashcards from online, and this algorithm is very smart because it asks you questions on a daily basis and it helps keep your memory very active and helps you perform better on your exams. Now, I personally love this method because any day that I have a test, the day before, I really don't do anything different. I do my Anki cards, it takes me a maximum of an hour, and I'm basically done studying for the day. And that's why I love it so much because I'm able to study less 
less time and understand more information. Now, another thing you could do that a lot of people do, even like my sister, Marina, she actually does this a lot, where she will study the material, then at different intervals throughout the week, she will try to recall all the information on a piece of paper and write down everything she knows. So essentially what she does is create her own questions for herself, or she creates topics for like a broad subject. So for example, you could say Parkinson's disease. Then she'd write down everything she knows about Parkinson's disease and test her knowledge and see if she wrote down everything and do this at different increments. So this is both helping with active recall while also helping with space repetition. Now there is many different ways you could do this, but I would say the two top ways is making questions for yourself either on Anki or making questions for yourself in general and writing everything down on a piece of paper or out loud without looking. Now let's review everything we discussed in this video and in the last video. So basically we know highlighting and rereading from the last videos are low utility and they basically suck, don't do them. Now we also know from this video, summarizing also sucks. It's low utility and it doesn't help at all. Don't do them. We also know elaborative integration, although it might be effective in some cases, it's only effective in factual based questions. And the research with that isn't even very promising. So that's why he organized it, Domlowski, as moderate utility. And finally, we found that space repetition and active recall are high utility and they are the most effective ways to study. Now, I hope you guys liked this video a lot because I loved making it because when I realized that this makes a huge difference on my studies, I was ecstatic and I wanted to tell everyone I could. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like the video down below if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And if you guys appreciate all the research that I did to find all these articles for these videos and for my other videos, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.